Okay, match five. On the draw, save is perfectly fine. Limited white source yet again. Okay, so now what do I do? I only have one white source, which means I can only play one of these cards for now. Which one do I want it to be? Probably the Ethereal Armor. So this turn I could go Crumbling Vestige, Ethereal Armor plus Glade Cover Scout. And then next turn go for something else, like Fist of Ironwood. That seems like a good plan to me, so I'm going to go for it. My opponent is likely playing counter magic, and I'd rather be able to play this ethereal armor before they have double blue mana available. So they can mana leak that or whatever, but uh, they can't counterspell it yet, so that's why I went for it now. No think twice or thought scour at the end of our turn, so opponent may not have very much going on in their hand. Okay. Throw the Fist of Ironwood down. I'm going to put it on the Slippery Boggle in case of a Diabolic Edict in response. And since I already have a hexproof creature resolved, I'm willing to trade off this Glade cover for the Delver if they want to. I think they'd rather get it flipped with 3 2 so I can hold back all of these 1 1s at one time. Diabolic Edict. Okay, well, there it is. So now our opponent's best route to victory is probably play Evancar's Justice and then play that Edict to kill the Boggle. I could trade off a 1-1 one, one just to deal one more damage, but I don't think I'm to that point yet. Alright. They're playing the Edict now, which makes me think maybe they don't have Evancar's Justice and they're playing this to, like, Edict four times to kill this Hexproof creature. Which seems pretty silly, but that might be their only good plan. Uh, because of them doing that, I think I'm going to play out the Boggle. I think that means they can't possibly have Evan Carr's Justice in hand. So, I'm just going to believe what their play is telling me and assume that they're going to try to edict their way through all these creatures and that it's safe to play out another one. So I'm safe to attack still with my first striker because I can kill the insectile aberration first if I wanted to and then uh so basically they can't double block. And since the Seagate Oracle blocks the one ones nicely, they decided to get in with the insectile aberration, try to race. Still it's not quite time yet. I think I'm going to save this Boggle. Evan Carr's Justice is really, plus Edict Effect is really the only thing that really gets us. And I'm not even sure I'm going to be attacking with those 1-1s one next turn anyway, so I think it can, I can wait a turn to try to resolve the Boggle. And they just keep on passing. All right, I drew a planes. I could journey to nowhere pre-combat. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. 
I can also pick up that crumbling vestige with score sky fisher and replay it next turn but i think this is good enough that i'm going to go for it it powers up ethereal armor it gets the one three out of the way so yeah they kind of forced to counter that so they did still not going to toss a one one away for two damage yet They go ahead and chump block. I'm trying to figure out what the meaning of that is. Why they didn't want the Seagate Oracle to stick around to block the one ones. They're attacking here. Which could mean Evancar's Justice. I'm not really sure. Gurmag Angler. Okay. So here I can go get an aura. The question is which aura I want to go get. Let's see. Journey to Nowhere is not an aura, so that's not going to work. I can get an aqueous form and also be able to cast it by tapping a creature. I think that's got to be the best choice. That means that they have to deal with my enchantments right away. Or my, my boggle right away, since it'll kill them next turn. I can also go get Ethereal Armor, since I do have Trample right now. That would give me a total of, let's see, plus one from the original Ethereal, plus three more from the new one. So I'd have a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler, effectively forcing my opponent to block. So yeah, I'd have a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler. I have so many choices here. I guess uh, Favor of the Overbeam is also good. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Aqueous Form. Unblockability is just so much easier. I'm also finally ready to throw away a creature to get in one damage here, so I'm going to do that. Armadillo Cloak? Yeah, I'll keep that on top. Now Evan Carr's Justice doesn't do anything, so I'm going to play out the Boggle. I guess it does something if they have Evan Carr's Justice and a Black Source and another Edict Effect, like a Diabolic Edict or Chainer's Edict. That could be bad for me. Opponent is brainstorming to see if they can find something that can deal with my unblockable creature. Delver's not going to do it. They play a swamp. And then they can see. Okay. So against them, no electricery, no hydroblast, no lone missionary, no scattershot or tangle. Considerations are standard bear and young wolf. Young wolf just does a so much better job. So I'm going to be playing that. What can go away? I think I'll drop off two Rancors. Since our opponent can remove our creatures in response so easily, they get a little bit worse. And they don't help me us get past a Gurmag Angler either. And I think I can cut a dead, dead weight as well. It's nice to be able to kill an Angler, but or to kill a Delver, but... All right. 
We have two boggles. We got perfect mana because of this abundant growth, assuming it resolves, so I'm gonna keep. We have sacrifice fodder with the colony garden. So the question is, do I lead with colony garden? And then turn two go boggle, boggle, or boggle plus growth. And then turn three favor the overbeam. Or do I do a more aggressive play with boggle turn one, but that exposes me to edict effects on their turn two? Pretty sure the answer has to be to be able to play the garden first. If I'm really lucky, my opponent's playing the zero Evancar's Justice version, and these boggles are just great. Alright, here I'll start out with Abundant Growth. I do not mind this getting negated or mana leaked or whatnot. I might eventually mind if I draw white spells or other stuff, but with the current hand it's okay if they get rid of it. Unfortunately it looks like they're saving the counter magic for the actual creature that matters. Okay, Essence Scatter. All right, and they pass the turn. Ethereal armor. Well, this could get out of hand quickly. See if I can resolve a boggle. And yet another brainstorm. All right, so now what to do? I could play Favor of the Overbeam. Uh, what I really want to resolve, though, is this Ethereal Armor. And the next question, though, is whether I want to play my Boggle. Right now, I'm going to bet on the fact that they're playing a no Evancar's Justice or a low Evancar's Justice version, um, and instead play this out to protect against Edict effects. Because I don't want them to just be able to go edict, edict, and then kill both my creatures. Of course, if they just go land Evancar's Justice, it would look pretty silly, having no creatures on board and a handful of auras, but hopefully they just tap out for Angler here and we get to journey in. That would be great. A Volked Mole Drifter, They're digging for something, anything to help them. All right, Aqueduct picks up a Swamp, so they don't miss their land drop this turn. Favor of the Overbeam. In this County Garden, Planet token I will save, because I don't expect them to have three edict effects available in one turn. They have enough mana and they have enough black sources, but it would require them to have a very specific hand. Oh, I forgot to attack with my other slippery boggle. I missed out on the point of damage. That was very bad. Maybe not horrible, but it's pretty bad. Well, if this game point comes down to one point of damage and I lose, then we'll know who to blame. I'm going to go ahead and play this out since it powers up my ethereal armor. And it gets negated, okay. And 
and here I am going to play out Colony Garden. Now that they have a 1-3 in play, if they do have Evancard's Justice, I'm in a huge amount of trouble anyway, so I'm just going to protect against normal Edict Effects instead. They're still on a two-turn clock, even after gaining two life. All right, there's an Edict. And it looks like I was correct to play the second Colony Garden there. Since they're going to start trying to chew through edict effects to get to my boggles. Come on, Aura. Glade Cover Scout. That's actually a fine draw. If they play another Radiant Fountain and go to 7 when they should be at 6 for me attacking with that extra Slippery Boggle that I forgot, that will be really embarrassing. Come on, no Radiant Fountain. No Mole Drifter to block. No Capsize to balance one of my auras. Just nothing. There we go. Alright, well, our opponent conceded. We ended up at 2-3. I think we should have been at 3-2 if we didn't uh, make that mistake in that match where we played the Journey to Nowhere we should not have. Uh, overall, the list feels pretty weird. Uh, I'll talk more about this in my article, but the mana, I mean, even getting white mana is sometimes an issue, and then on top of that we're playing blue and black cards, which doesn't feel great. Um, but it is kind of a fun deck. Boggles are good, Ethereal Armor is very good, Armadillo Cloak is very good. A lot of games where you just resolve, like, an Ethereal Armor and then one or two other auras you just can't lose, which is pretty cool. But thanks for watching. Uh, check out the article for more information. And don't forget to subscribe to the MTG Goldfish YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.